You guys have no idea how much I love coffee in the morning. Welcome back to a brand new episode, episode 2 now of Hurt to Berlin, uh, FM 21 now, playthrough, save, whatever you want to freaking call it, I don't know, I don't care, but nonetheless, we're here, it is now 12th of September, so as you can see, we've already made progress, and you might be able to tell, we made some signings, I'm gonna be going through them now, I'm gonna throw you some screenshots on the screen, first one we signed, Andrea P uh, Papetti, uh, I did some research into some wonder kids that look like okay they might be decent and whatnot maybe i'll try and give them a shot plus we do have somewhat of an aging squad at some areas but also a lot of young players as well as someone like me i like to essentially have lots of young players and essentially when someone hits like 28 29 i kind of want to ship them off get a bunch of money back and reinvest that into the youth um and so yeah first signing we made two million for andrea papetti only a 15.5 per week k wage which is great so yeah, he should be a great addition. Um, he'll probably start on the subs, but after maybe probably during the season, he'll probably get a bunch of playing time too as a ro uh, center back rotation. The next signing and probably my possible favorite, I don't know, but we'll see. Is Manuel Gasparini is one of the most highly rated youth prospects and as a goalkeeper in the save or in the game i should say a lot of people have been rating this guy got him for 4.7 million no extra add-ons or anything like that which is great uh 10 000 a week which is awesome on a four-year deal so he's gonna be probably at least for now he's gonna be starting because our current goalkeeper fractured his arm so that's not exactly great but hopefully these these first three games or so he can you know get some experience and start to and at least start the stages of his uh of his development all right i know this one might be a little bit controversial because he was a great player in fm20 as well pretty popular pick but i went for him again because i kind of needed a winger and he kind of just seemed like the right guy for the right price and i got renier for 900k um, I made a mistake signing him because I didn't realize that when I was signing him, the duration of this starts next year. So we don't have him this year. But you know what? That's fine. It's 900k. He's still only 17. So we have time with that. Of course, Brazilian wonder kid. Uh, he's going to be on 5.25k a week, which is phenomenal and nothing so easy quick um uh, we'll get we'll have him next year so we'll just have to keep that in mind when we still sign players and whatnot but yeah great price for a great player second to last we sign nico serrano another wonder kid that plays usually on the left wing uh, we signed him for 5.75 million i believe from bilbao i want to say atletico bilbao um it's either them or madrid i don't remember uh but 5.75 yeah, 5.75k a week, um, three-year deal, so not too much, but of course, he's still only 17, and that's why, so as soon as he hits about 20, we're going to be signing him for longer as well, give him a new contract and stuff like that, but despite his young age, he's going to be in the first team because we needed a little bit more... Uh, essentially proper talented depth in our squad because we had the lights the likes of like matthew lucky and paco their die and you really want those guys in the team those are usually guys i kind of get out as soon as possible unless i just need them for depth reasons and last but certainly not least is manuel agarte now this guy i've heard a lot of talk about them especially in the multiple discord servers i've seen apparently this guy is brilliant apparently a lot of people like this guy he's a great defensive midfielder and i kind of figured you know what 1.5 mil i might as well just ship the money out and get him in this team right now looking at manuel agarte as well he's uruguay 19 years old valued now already at 7 million even though we just bought him for 1.5 but look at his stats for a deep line playmaker, which we're probably going to play him in because even though I would almost prefer to play him as a defensive midfielder, I'm probably going to play him as a deep line playmaker, but probably with the defensive roles, just so we can get some of those up and stuff like that, those defensive attributes up. Uh, but yeah, like 14 first touch, 13 passings, vision's already 13 as well as teamwork's 15. Really nice with... Pretty decent fan uh physicals, not amazing at all, not by any means, but he's a defensive midfielder, uh, and he's still only 19 years old, so he's time to get a lot of that up. 
as of right now, this is what the team is looking like. We have Gasparini for now in goal because, as you can see right here, Trifolo is injured with his fractured arm. He's going to be out for another seven days to three weeks. Hopefully, he should be back in time for the Bayern game because I would kind of prefer to start him over Gasparini just because Trifolo at the moment is a bit better. Uh, but, of course, we got Zufiuk, Stark, Alderate, Middlestadt. Uh, the back line hasn't changed. Um, for the most part, our starting 11 hasn't changed. We got Ascasibar, uh, Ganduzi, Dorita in the middle, the Rosen on the left, uh, Luka, uh, Dodi Lukabakio on the right, and of course, Ayas Kunha on up front. And hopefully, we're going to see how this goes. Um, one thing I'm thinking is that maybe next season is when I'm going to dive into the transfer market a bit more. And I'm probably going to be trying to get rid of the DM and go for a cam. There seems to be... Uh, I don't know we're, we're gonna see how that works we're gonna see how that works maybe i shouldn't just because we have manuel agarte he should be a rock in the back and whatnot we're also probably at some point probably gonna try a formation like this just a regular 442 um it's probably gonna be a bit more of a defensive um or cautious i should say so we'll change that there but um i haven't messed with any of these tactics yet i kind of just figured let me get some of the rules at where i kind of want them to be and whatnot yeah we'll probably have matthias kunha up front and then probably put uh christoph piontek right here to cover what we pretty much have gone through since in between episodes, uh, we face it was pretty much just um, starting a line, starting lineup versus the subs, uh, starting lineup one to one, um, and then we had some friendlies. I guess uh, Dornburn 1913 one two nil, SV Horn three nil, and then we faced Atalanta and we drew nil nil. So I mean it's not terrible. I'll take it. It's not a bad. Uh, preseason not many friendlies though and i'm still kind of wondering why we started so late but maybe that's just how the german league is it just started later than most others but nonetheless tomorrow well in game tomorrow we face havelesse um we're gonna see how that goes don't know if i pronounce that right hopefully sorry but we, fa we face havelesse um in the dfb pokal first round so we're kind of kind of just getting right into here is our first look at how they do the lineups, which is really neat. It's really cool. They did a lot of UI changes and everything. So, yeah. All right. Outstretched arms. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Pump fist. We should be winning. Come on. Pump fist. Faith in you. Pump fist. Faith. Pump fist. Faith. Let's go, boys. Let's go. It's go time. That's okay. We have another throw in with almost the same people. Lua with Dodi and Zifuik going in, but Middlestad gets the penalty. Great stuff. Great stuff. Vladimir. Come on, Dari. Come on, Dari. Puts it in the back of that. Vladimir Darida. That's what we want. Dari going down the line, but trying to get the option to put a ball in. He does, and it's Dodi Lukabakio with his first goal of the season. What a goal. Dari just runs down the line. Just kind of looking to see his options. The defender does well staying with him, but loses and gives him space last moment, giving Doty the time to run in through into the cross. The Rosen puts the ball in, and it's Matthias Cunha. Man, they recovered it after the clearance of the free kick, and there we go. Sorry, the free kick. Stark. Oh, but he's offsides. It's a great header and a great opportunity, but he cannot stop the offsides. How far away was he? Inches. Inches unfortunate for nicholas that will be half time now we're doing great so far our xg keeps going up our xg is at 2.53 so i mean three goals it's not terrible at all um i think we had a few more other chances as well but i'm completely happy with that very pleased keep it up now we're gonna be going through some tactics real quick because there's no reason to have star players out right now it's the dfb pokal against a lower league team so no, nothing to them, but we need to do do some subs real quick and get some players kind of getting some sharpness up and everything. So some of the players that I'm going to be doing. So Alderate, he's not having the best of times, it seems right now. He's at a 6.9. I mean, in comparison to everyone else. So for him, Omar, we're going to take you out for Papetti. We're going to put the new guy in for his debut. We're also going to try something. We're going to take Nico Serrano on for Haver, Havero Dorosin see how he can do up front on his debut as well and then what i'm thinking is that elsewise we're not doing terrible kunha is still very fit and everything so that's good we're gonna get a clunter on for zephyr get him a break get our fullbacks plenty of breaks one thing i probably might need to do before 
this transfer uh window ends is get a versatile left back and right back someone who can play both that's one less uh subspace in the bench great tackle though mm, mm. Nico Serrano is trying to drink my coffee. Jesus. What a goal. What a ball in the first place. But what a goal. Schumacher makes a mistake trying to put the ball in. Rushes it. Dari gets it. What a ball from Dari. And Nico Serrano with the finesse. Great stuff from the 17-year-old Spanish kid. We love to see it. And that is the game with Kunha, Serrano, Bakio, and Dorita with the goals. Love to see it. Good stuff. XG makes, for the most part, somewhat sense. Not exactly, but we had 26 shots with 11 on target. So I'm very, very happy with that. Outstretched arms, good win. I'm well done. I'm happy. I'm happy with that. It was something that I was kind of afraid of with the first competitive game that we were playing that maybe we'll just screw up and lose. But it didn't happen. We continued through and we pulled through with the expected victory. So that is always good. Petty impresses like he will, like he always will. We got him from Bresca. Middlestat on form. He is the player of the match. No goals, no assists, but five key passes. So defensively he, and creatively, he was very, very good. Um, Your passing was a joy. Yes, I... That was five key passes. It's unlucky he didn't get an assist or even a goal as well, but he was doing very well, sitting all the way outside by the byline, putting balls in, just always being an option, which is really something that I wanted from my fullbacks as well. So that also might be somewhere, even though he did well, maybe we can look to uh, take over from Zifuik uh, to get oh, some really good fullbacks of course if you guys know any of uh players that i should really look into and possibly sign let me know and i'll definitely try and look at them and it looks like we're gonna get one more matthias arezzo so if you're even thinking about him i already had him in my sights there's another striker because i want to get rid of john cordoba and possibly uh christoph piontek get some money in it's only 1.8 mil 17 year old argentinian striker the guy he looks amazing he looks great he looks just great. Um, 19 determination, so he's a he's a determined player and everything like that. Um, natural fitness isn't great, but 12 pace, 16 stamina, so he's gonna be able to play for a while. Great uh, dribbling, finishing, and first touch stats. Uruguayan. This is something I'm happy about. 11k a week. He wants to be a squad player. Happy. I am happy with that. So we're gonna bring him into this team, and we have to choose our captain now. There are some problems with this. Boyata is not gonna play. He was almost loaned out, but I couldn't because there's a restriction right now. You can only have eight loan players out over the age of 22, and we have eight currently. So I couldn't even loan him out. Stark's gonna be our captain. He's gonna be our number one mother trucker. I think we're just gonna make it Santiago Escasibar. He's gonna be someone who plays quite often. Nicholas Start's gonna be someone who plays quite often. And they're two pretty key players in our squad. So I'm gonna warn him about losing it. He's happy. He says, I think you're probably right. I won't pretend I'm not disappointed, but we've got some strong characters in the room. Cool. I'm happy he agrees. Thank you, Boyata. Dedrick, I love you. There we have it. New captain, Stark and Escasibar as our captain and vice captain, respectively. Just to give you a look at the transfers as well. Uh, before I was even here, all of these players were already sold off, which kind of sucks because Andres Duda was actually a pretty good cam. I really liked him in previous saves. He's only 25 years old, too, and they only sold him for 6 million? 6.5 mil, so really nothing. Kareem Rekic, he's a pretty solid defender. He's not amazing by any means, but he's solid. Only 1.8 mil. Bad business on hurt this part. But we did sell Palco Dardai for 175k with some add-ons as well in there. So nothing particular. Um, the board wasn't exactly happy with it. However, we made lots of signings here. We got Papetti, Gasparini, Serrano, Ugarte with Matthias Arezzo and Renier coming next. Oh, this isn't good. Maximilian Middlestat is now out for four to five weeks with an abdominal strain. So we're going to have to leave him to the physio. With Middlestat's injury, it means that we're going to put Marvin Plattenhart, one of my personal favorite players, when it comes to the FM, we're going to put him in the side because he's also really good at free kicks as well, so it's perfect. But we're also going to bring Jordan to the side because even though he's a center back, he can play left side if we need him to. So we have a little bit of cover there. In case you were wondering as well with our staff situation, uh, like I said in between episodes, I was focusing on that. 
uh, we hired our full coaching team so we're all full there we're looking absolutely fantastic the only places that we should improve on in the future is another goalkeeping coach uh, a defending coach and another fitness coach but we'll be sure to do that in time because i'm guessing throughout the season we'll be able to ask the board for more coaching members and hopefully they'll give it to us or they'll just give it to us without even asking so hopefully we can get that soon um in addition with our recruitment we're pretty much full except we need a scout and a loan manager i'm not gonna bother with a loan manager i kind of want to just deal with loans all by myself just to make sure certain players are going on loan that i'm okay with and others stay like nico serrano even though he's 17 a loan manager might say hey we should loan him out but i don't want to because he's going to stay in the first team and it looks like in the next round of the dfb pokal we will be facing sps so sandhausen so I mean, they're in the Bundesliga too. Not a not an easy team by any means, but should be a good matchup. This is the team that we're going to be going out with. One thing I do love about the Bundesliga is that we have nine substitutes instead of a regular seven like we see in many other leagues. So it gives us plenty of spots to bring in people. So we always have options on the bench. But the only notable change I would say right now is, of course, we're bringing Skasi Bart back in. For, uh, to start and we're also bringing Plattenhart back in for the injured and middle stat which hopefully he's back soon but two to four weeks we'll see how that goes Shvolo is still injured but hopefully it looks like he'll be back in five to ten days hopefully for the Bayern game as well here is the lineup for Werder Bremen versus Erta Berlin this is our first league matchup against uh which is now Werder Bremen and whatnot however we'll see how it goes Plattenhart puts a ball in nothing there Puts another ball in, but can't do anything with it. Scassi Bar on the edge of the area. Planar on the edge of the area. Brings it back. Just kind of controlling the possession with our positive mentality. And Ganduzi looking for someone. Dari on the ball. Bakio tries to get it in. Zefuik is luckily able to recover the ball, but nothing can happen on this encounter. Platinar puts the ball in, but it's cleared by Dave Selke, our on loan player here from Hertha Berlin. The Rosen gets the ball. Platinar is tackled. However, he still can put the ball in. Zefuik is able to recover. Put it. Oh, gets tackled again. Puts the ball in. That's a goal by Matthias Cunha. That's what we're talking about. It's exactly what we needed away from home against Werder Bremen. Matthias Cunha, I really wanted to get another striker in. However, I figured he's a good player. He's a great youth player, and he has a lot of potential with him. So he gets fortunate and gets the ball through Pavlenka, a good goalkeeper as well game is almost done with only five minutes of extra time that's a lot of time for Verde Bremen to put a ball in and get a quick last minute goal but we'll see how it goes one minute left in, uh, in extra time and that is full time we win one nil first managerial competitive game and we win against Verde Bremen it wasn't the best of starts however we kept them down big time the only shot and chance that they had was Davi Selke the only shot and their only shot on target so defensively i think we did very well we're going to change some tactics with our goalkeeper with his distribution because the kicking far and everything we just lost possession so it's probably something we don't really want so the goal from kunha to win one no over Werder Bremen puts us now fifth in the table uh, not a bad start of course there's you know 33 games to go however it's exactly what we needed to get going and get some momentum going as well but i'm gonna end the episode here i'm also gonna do some games in between episodes looking at the schedule we have eintracht frankfurt Bayern, Sukar, and a couple others. So what I might try and do is finish out, of course, September and maybe October as well. Do a couple games next episode, probably these three games right here in November. And we'll probably just try to do a month-to-month -month basis. That way the series doesn't drag out doing only two, three games an episode. So if you guys have enjoyed, let me know. Leave a like down below if you're enjoying the series. Also subscribe. Um, I notice there's a lot of people, you know, you guys want to... Some of you guys weren't subscribed or whatnot. But hey, if you want to enjoy more of this content, just subscribe. It lets me know that you're enjoying it. I can try and push this out even more than I am right now. Of course, I'm still in college. So I still have assignments I do and stuff like that. So I can't always just do this day in and day out. But of course, my semester is almost done. Meaning, hopefully... I can do this more often and hopefully almost try and get to an episode every day or just kind of continue an episode every other day. So yes, leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment below if you guys have any suggestions for me. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.